How are you, my fans, sneak peepers, and curious friends? I am difficult and demanding. If you want to know my real name, then hold still, and I might bring your wish to fruition. Before we begin, you can find this podcast show in iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, Blueberry, Google Play Music, TuneIn, YouTube, and Stitcher. Now, unlike the other people in your life, I actually care about what you think. So meet me halfway, take a tiny moment, and give my podcast and each episode a review rating. This is the I'm Difficult and Demanding podcast, keeping it real, uncensored, and shooting straight between the eyes. The third eye, that is. I am going to hit you with explicit truth. This solo show is outrageously honest and keenly witty with a view into life. Yes, I said life. That's what we do every day when we wake up from sleeping. We are living life. Well, some of us at least. Moreover, I hope to provide you with gut-wrenching laughter and a touch of wisdom. Let's get something straight. Really, really straight. I am truly, actually, habitually, and shamelessly difficult and demanding. And I completely own it. Now, I don't ask for much because I expect and receive it all. I firmly believe that if you expect shit, you will receive shit. What does that mean? Well, it means expect nothing but the best and don't settle for less. As always, I, your host, Tara, am keeping it real and uncensored. This is meant to be. Did you know that? You are listening to me because this is destiny's hand. So unplug from your life and dive all into episode 53 of the I'm Difficult and Demanding podcast. Come dance with me. I want to dance with your desire. Yes, your desire. I want to teach you how to stoke your desire, how to stroke your desire, because you can't ignore it, get rid of it, or change it. Do you know your significant other? Do you really know them? How do you know? How do you know if they've showed you, really showed you the true them? Because if you're caught up in living a normal life, then your partner may have a quote unquote abnormal secret. Before I begin, I am going to do a call out. What's a call out? Well, it's not a shout out. I am calling out you motherfucking lurkers. If you have entered my world, then be honest with yourself about it. You want to be here, and you know I want you here, so follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Finally, climb aboard and enjoy the entire show, because I am giving you plenty of ridiculous honesty. Once the podcast episode ends, I am keeping it going on my Instagram page at Difficult and Demanding, and on my Twitter page at Mrs. D and D. I'm back. Did you miss me? Do you want me? Do you want me as much as I want you? Can you taste it like I can? Yes, taste it. Can you taste your desire for me? What does it taste like? Or does your desire have a scent? Well, what's the scent? Or is your desire a sound for you? Is it a moan? A groan? A whisper? Desire is so magical. It's so consuming. It makes you tingle. It makes you shiver. Oh, how it makes your mind wander and wander. All of the endless situations and scenarios you create in your mind. A number of you fantasize about me. Oh, you didn't think I knew that? Of course I know that. I know very well. Which is why I change my voice for you. I want my voice to pulse and vibrate through your mind, body, heart, and soul. I want you to hear me at all times. I stay with you. 
Don't you want me with you? <laughs> of course you do. I am desire. I am your desire. So tell me, tell me, what does your desire say? What does it say? You have not taken the time to listen. You should. What does it say to you? Yeah, you didn't know your desire speaks, but yes, it does. And if you're lucky, it'll sound like me. But if not, you can pretend. You can fantasize it's me. You'll struggle. You'll struggle with that, though. But I can't blame you for trying. For trying to replicate me. So tell me, what types of things does your desire tell you? What does he or she crave? Yes, what does your desire crave? Tell me what you're craving. We all have yearnings. Some are stronger than others. But then you have people like me that stoke and stroke your desire. You like that, don't you? The stoking and the stroking? <laughs> yeah, I'm a hot mess. But I've just made you hotter. <laughs> so let me tell you what's dangerous about me. About difficult and demanding. Most people, they like to tempt and taunt you visually. That shit's easy. Too easy. You will forget that, that person. As soon as the next hot motherfucker comes across your path. However, with me, I'm going to fuck you in a place that you'll never forget. I'm going to mind fuck you. I get into your head. Yeah, I get into your head. I'm there right now. Are you going to admit it? Some of you, yes. Some of you, no. But I get into your head. Then I proceed to your heart. Then I continue to your soul. And last but not least, I take your body. If you're the lucky one, the chosen one, are you the chosen one? Well, if you are, then you already know that shit. I consume motherfuckers whole. I don't leave anything. There's no proof. There's no scraps. There's no leftovers. <laughs> wow. I've got you, don't I? I know I do. Because that's what I do. I'm going to keep you under tension. I'm going to push you away. And then I'm going to pull you back to me. I am going to kiss you and push you away at the same damn time. And then when you try to leave, I'm going to pull you back ever so gently. I'm dancing with desire. Yeah, I'm dancing with desire. What you think about that? I'm dancing with your desire. Your desire is my desire. Yes, I make it mine. When it's mine, I can do so much with it and you. What do you want me to do with you? Huh? Tell me. You can tell me any and everything. So tell me. I know your desire is speaking to you. And I'm going to ensure it responds back to you. Tell me how you want it. Tell me how you like it. You can't run from desire. You can't hide from desire. 
So let's find out what the fuck we're going to do with it. And then we're going to keep doing it. So what is desire? It's very easy to pull up a dictionary to read what it says. But I want to go off of my sensations as far as what I get when I think of the word desire. And initially what comes to mind with me with desire, desire is usually forbidden, is dirty, is hidden, is secret, is taboo. It's something that you do in the dark at night. And I don't know why. We all have desires. And desire, it falls on both extremes of the spectrum. As far as what is acceptable and public view and what is unacceptable and what you do privately. But desire is a craving. It's a yearning. It's a want. It's a need. It's part of your being. It's a part of your survival. And you're saying, how can you say desire is a part of, you know, my survival? I need food, clothing, and shelter to survive. Well, guess what? If your ass doesn't have any clothes on and it's cold outside, then I guess you would have a goddamn desire to get some clothing. Now, wouldn't you? Now you catch my point. Desire is fundamental to who we are as human beings. We desire to be alone. We desire to connect with others. Everything we do, we have, we want, we need comes from a desire. Now you can call it what you want, a hope, a wish, a prayer, a craving, a yearning, whatever. The fact is it comes down to desire and desire. It makes us feel like we have no control over that shit at all because it overpowers you. It washes over you. It consumes you. It distracts you. It causes you to wonder. It causes you to wander. You can't contain that shit even if you try. And a lot of y'all motherfuckers like to lock this shit in the closet or you have your double secret life. But you and I both know you can't do shit with desire. And even if you master the art of keeping that shit under control, it always lets you know that I'm still alive. I still exist, bitch. And you can't do a motherfucking thing about it. What do you think about that? Yes, all you prim and proper people who say the right things, do the right things, show the right things at the right places with the right people, all that. And you are the persons with the most strongest desires. The harder you work to control or basically lock it away. That's my clue. That's my cue that you are the one with the strongest desires. That's how it works. So what is a desire? It's a need. It's a want. Call it whatever it is that you want to call it. It's all a matter of your point of view. But what I will tell you this is something that you can't go without. You think you can, you try to, but eventually the shit catches up with you and you have to feed it. You have to indulge it. You can deny it. You keep trying to, but you cannot. You cannot because your desire is your soul, your being speaking to you. And you can't quiet that shit when you leave your motherfucking body. Even then your soul still exists. So for those of you who think that you can lock your desire away, put it in a closet, sweep it under the rug, water it down, put it in the box, act like it doesn't exist, ignore it. You can't deny you. You can't do it. Have you tried to shut a motherfucker up and they won't be quiet? You keep trying, it gets louder. You keep trying, it gets louder. You keep trying, it gets louder. And then some of you who are really fortunate, you meet people, places, and things that will erupt that desire you've been trying to lock away. They will erupt that shit in you. It will be like a volcano going off in you. Then what are you going to do then when your lava starts overflowing? Yeah, your desire needs to be fed. It needs to be 
cultivated. It needs to be tended to. It needs to be listened to. It needs to be honored, respected, appreciated. Yeah. Your desire is your soul, your being speaking to you, asking you for things that helps it grow. And when it grows and get what it wants, then it glows. So when it grows and it glows, then it's at peace and then you feel good. But that's too simple for you guys, or is it too complicated? Either way, honoring your desire takes a lot of courage. And a lot of us don't have that courage to acknowledge it. So I already told you why you have your desire. That's something deep within you, your spirit, your soul speaking to you saying, I need this for my happiness. I need this for your fulfillment. I need this for your sustenance. I need this for your overall well-being. Your desire is you trying to speak to you to get you to live a full and happy life. Not that fraud based shit that you people like to do. No, no. And you're saying, well, how can my desire be uh, my spirit speaking to me when some of the shit I like is kinky, dirty, forbidden, all those things are goddamn labels that you picked up from some motherfucking place. But you want what you want, you like what you like, and you love what you goddamn love. Your spirit and soul doesn't know anything about a label, and it doesn't care about a label. All it knows is what it needs to be happy and to help you be happy and live your life to the fullest. Those labels, that's your hang up. That has nothing to do with your desire. And when you try to put those labels on your desires and use that as a justification, as a way to not live your life to the fullest, you're the torn, unhappy, disgruntled person who's unfulfilled and hollow on the inside. That's what you are. So why are some desires uncontrollable? You know why some desires are uncontrollable? Because one, it's been ignored. For a long, long, long damn time. Two, circumstances, situations, people, places, or things that you may or may not be aware of is stoking, stoking it and bring it to life. And if it's uncontrollable, that means it's a part of you has been denied for a very, 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 very long time. Now, if you know anything about a person that is famished, who been starving, who's hungry, they're going to eat, eat, eat until every part of their being feels satisfied. So it's not just about filling up the tummy. When someone's been starved and deprived, they're going to eat until their mind, body, heart, and soul feels satisfied. So that may cause them to overeat. But by the time they're done, all parts, all components of who they are, what makes them who they are, will be satisfied. And then at that point in time, the person can find their equilibrium and their balance. So when you have a desire that's uncontrollable, it's going to stay that way until it feels that you have fed it all that it has missed, all that it needs, and all that it needs to continue day to day. You can't run from it. And the more that you fight that uncontrollable desire, instead of coming up with a healthy, practical way to resolve what you're dealing with, it's going to become more fierce and more ferocious and more uncontrollable. You won't be able to think You won't be able to focus. Your mind will be off in whatever world or realm that you need to be in to take care of what needs to be taken care of. And I've already told you what your desire is. That's your spirit speaking to you. And you can't quiet your spirit. You cannot. That's why a number of people have midlife crisis. That's why a number of people are depressed and anxious because you're doing shit that doesn't work for you. And what does work for you, you don't tend to because it doesn't look like your picture perfect life that you have in your mind, which is why a number of us are unhappy, 
unfulfilled, lacking deep connections with oneself and others because it's all fraud. So when you're ready to get real, then you start taking a deep, hard look at what your desires are trying to tell you. So what do your desires say about you? They say a whole bunch of shit about you. Your desires have so many telltale secrets about you. And if you listened and paid attention to it, you would see there's a wealth of knowledge and wisdom. And by you listening, ingesting, digesting, and making it a part of who you are, acknowledging it, you will see that you will blossom. You will grow as a person. You will be radiant, charismatic, magnetic, and all the things you start, you want, you hope, you dream of will start to come to you. But when you're fighting with yourself, you're at odds with yourself. You're not going to win the battle. And you're saying, yes, I am. Cause I got my shit locked away. My shit is locked. Lock, key is thrown away yet. Yeah, you can, you can think you lock it away, but all you're really doing, you are so unhappy. You won't begin to know the depths of what it is. Your relationships, your career, any and everything that's of importance to you will essentially be hollow. It will be meaningless. It will be worthless. So if you think that you can win this battle, no, no, that's why so many of you are in this fuck all endless fucking drone of relationships and unhappy and unfulfilled while you're on goddamn porn hub, drinking bottles of fucking wine like this, a glass and doing all these other shit to cope. You know why you're coping? Because you're not listening to your desires. You're not living your best life. You're not being the true you. Do you dare to be you? Learn about you. And shit, if the people around you cannot accept you, then you know what that means? There's a billion other people on this earth or more. You can find some other people who are conducive to who you really are. So do your desires bring you shame, regret, or judgment? Hell yeah, they do. Yes, they do. But if everyone paid attention to their own goddamn desires, there would be no time, no energy to focus on someone else. But no, you always have some weak, cowardly ass people who don't want to focus on their life and what they need to do. They want to be all up in your business. So to be happy, to be really happy, you got to be a boss on that shit. You got to have some backbone, some, some gumption, some fucking balls on that shit. You got to be a leader. You got to lead your life by example. And when I say lead your life by example, that means there's no motherfucking ball, uh, followers behind you. You are marching to your own tune on your own journey, your own path. And you've got to be steeled for people's judgments, for people trying to put regret and shame on you. Why are you going to have regret and shame for who the fuck you are? You are wired that way for a reason. You were made this way for a reason, which means to me, you are perfect the way you are. So if someone cannot accept and appreciate you for who you are, I would say you got the wrong motherfuckers around you. Why you want to be around miserable son of a bitches when you can be happy? You can feel light. You can feel free. You can feel radiant. When you're happy, you are more creative. When you're happy, you get more success. When you're happy, you can figure out how to navigate this world and do shit that you could never imagine. Happiness is powerful. So is misery. But most of us were comfortable being miserable, but we can't get the fucking backbone to be happy and stand in that shit. People can have their opinions. Fuck them. Because deep down, they're really jealous of you and the fact that you have enough balls to do it. Let them have their opinions. Frankly, if you don't have a problem with you and the other person has the problem, what that means to me is the other motherfucker has the problem. Don't let someone else make their problems yours. If they feel uncomfortable with you being you, then guess what the fuck they need to do? They need to go the other direction. Why you need to change or compromise yourself because someone else is uncomfortable with you living your truth. How does that work? How does, sh how does that fucking seem? That shit doesn't seem right to me. So let's stop changing and watering down and chopping ourselves off to make someone else feel comfortable. Other people's comfort is not your goddamn problem. If they feel insecure, they feel insecure. If they feel shame, they feel shame. If they feel regrets, they feel regrets. If they have goddamn judgments, they can eat that shit, swallow it and shit it the fuck out and eat it again. As far as I'm concerned, it has not, it does have nothing to do with you. If you're worried about being rejected, there's so many people on the face of this earth. 
One rejection, two rejection, three rejection, four. Five rejections, six rejections, seven rejections, eight. Keep that shit coming. Because all these motherfuckers who are rejecting you, you're going to have a whole bunch of other people on the other side who's accepting you, who appreciate you, who have great respect and admiration for your courage in doing you and being you. Do you understand? So what do you do if your loved one or partner is uncomfortable or unaccepting of your desires? Oh yeah, a number of you are in this situation. A number of y'all fools off there on porn hub, watching porn or fucking, you know, going to massage parlors or living your goddamn double life uh, or, you know, gawking at women at the gym or doing whatever because you don't get what you need. So if you are in a relationship and you love this person, and this person said they love you back, but you can't be who the fuck you are. Then I'm asking you, who is it that they really love? Huh? If you can't be you and you are not you and you're doing sh- shit and secret and hiding, I'm asking you the person you're in a relationship, who the fuck do they love? Because it's, it's, it's clear to me. They don't love you. If they loved you, they could see you, all of you. If they loved you, they would embrace all of you. They will support, accept you. There would be no fucking sneaking. If you want to watch a goddamn porno, guess what? Hey, I'm watching a porno. Good. Go have fun. Whatever. What is you watching a porno got to do with the other motherfucker? Ain't got shit to do with anything. Yeah, I've hit a nerve. Fuck a nerve. I'm going to cut that bitch up. And you don't like what I'm saying? I understand. You think I'm excited and pumped? I am because I'm sick of fucking fraud-based shit. We go around telling people we love them. How you going to love somebody if you only like a a piece of them? Some of them. And you only love them as long as they show you what the fuck you want to see. That is not love. That's some bullshit with strings attached. Love, you're supposed to feel safe, secure, comfortable. You're supposed to feel like you're at home. And if you did not have the desires to begin with, and these desires basically popped up later in your relationship, then at that point in time, both of you need to sit the fuck down and talk to shit. I'm saying, what are we going to do about it? Are you okay with me doing this, this, and this? And then that person has an option to say, you know what, this works for me, but unfortunately this doesn't work for me. And then you have to say, okay, I need this. This doesn't work for you. So if you can't give me this, what are we going to go from here? And then the person's going to say, well, I can't give it to you. So either I'm going to leave this relationship or I love you enough to let you go do what you need to do. That's called unconditional love. What I like what I don't like, what I love, what I don't love is no reflection on the other person at all. But people seem to take shit personally. They take the other person's likes, wants, desires, and needs, and they take that shit personally. Like it's some reflection on them. Like I fell in love with you. So in order for me to stay in love with you and keep in love with you, you must always portray this image because I am fearful that if anyone found out that you're any or everything other than what I have shown them, then that means I'm a fuck all person. We care too much about what other people think. Fuck them. Fuck them. Fuck them. Fuck them. No matter how hard you try to come up with this picture perfect image and maintain this picture perfect image, there's always going to be a hater on the sides, the back, the front, the top, the bottom. It's going to have some shit to say. So if you can't control everyone's opinion, you can't control popular opinion. Why are you stressing and worrying yourself about some shit that you have no control over? All you can do is live your best life. So what do you do if your partner cannot accept or uncomfortable? Well, you do one or two things. Either you keep living the fraud based life that you have one, two, you have a conversation and they say, I can't give that to you, but I love you enough to let you go do what you need to do. And then I will decide whether I want to stay with you or not. Or three, you go your separate ways and you say, thank you for your time with me. But this is of utmost importance to me. And our time has come to an end. That's what it is. You don't like what you heard. I understand. You got three options, three choices of how do you live your life? Simple as that. What happens when you deny your desires? Yeah, that is a, that is a slippery goddamn slope. I would tell you that right now. When you deny your desires and you deny who and what you are, you will become one hollow, robotic, disgruntled, unfulfilled, hating, miserable ass motherfucker. Can I throw any more adjectives in there? Yes. You're not going to be a nice person to be around. You will either show people what they want to see and put on your fucking happy face. 
or you will be a miserable son of bitch and not care. Either way, both parts, both parties, you're not happy. What is wrong with being happy? And why can't we accept the responsibility and what the costs are to be happy? We're too caught up in what other people think. We're too caught up in what other people feel. And we are clueless as to what we think and what we feel. So is there a cost when you deny your desires? Yes. There's a lot of stress and strain put on you on so many different levels. And it plays out in your life. Some people, you can keep it wrapped for many, many years. Some people have midlife crisis. Some people cheat. You do a whole, some people become workaholics. Some people become alcoholics. The list goes on and on and on. But if you think you can deny your desires and get away with it and live a happy, fulfilling life, no, it's going to creep up and rear its head in one way or another in different parts of your life. You cannot escape it at all. So you need to eat that shit, accept that. Is desire a good thing or a bad? Depends on, it depends on you. If you embrace and you accept yourself and you understand that you have your best interests in mind, whatever your desires are, they are, they don't need a label. But if you feel compelled to put a label on your desires, you are going to continue to be screwed up. There's no labels that you can put on you. There's no labels you can put on your being. You need what you need. You want what you want. And it is what it is. So if you remove the labels that makes navigating life, that makes navigating your life a lot easier. It makes things so much simpler for you. But if you go around trying to stick things in boxes and put labels on it, you're going to struggle most of your life and you're going to be depleted by the fucking end of it. And it's as simple as that. Cut the labels, stop judging yourself and just do what is in your best interest in a balanced, mature way. That's all I can say. What happens when someone awakens desires in you that you didn't know that you had, or they awaken desires within you that are, that are dormant. Yeah, that is an exciting thing. I'm being sarcastic people, but yeah, that is something that is a roller coaster ride. It can be an exciting one. If you know what you're dealing with, Or it can feel like you have lost control and lost your damn mind at the same goddamn time. Some of us, we have needs that we don't even know we have. And some of these bitches, we put them to sleep and lock them away for so long that we forgot they exist. And then you have the right person like me that comes along and brings motherfuckers to life that gives people life. And then you get this jolt, like you've been electrocuted or a jumper cable. And then you start looking around like, like a vampire that woke the fuck up and now you want to feed. Yeah. And then you can't stop it. Cause once it starts flowing, it starts going and it's gone. When you have a desire that you've locked away, that you've made dormant, acted like it didn't exist. And then you have people like me that go around giving thunderbolts, lightning, jumper cables to this shit. Once that desire awakens, that desire, that part of you, your soul being will never, ever, 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 ever be put to sleep again. It will never allow you to be put to sleep again. Did you hear what I said? I'm going to say it again. For those of you who have mastered the skill of locking away your desires, of pretending they don't exist, and you held them down with such force and will, that you forgot they existed or they became dormant. When you meet someone who can jolt that shit awake, jolts it awake, unbeknownst to you. Once that happens, you will never, ever, ever be able to put that shit back to sleep again because your spirit, your soul won't allow it. And that's when your desires become uncontrollable. And you will never have the ability to make it dormant again. So then what you do, people run off the reservation and they appear crazy to other people. And they like to say that, okay, you're an addict here. You have an issue. No, you don't have an issue. You know what your issue was? You spent too many years trying to conform to some shit that wasn't you. And then you met difficult and demanding. And she stoked and stroked your shit back to life. And now... It's time for you to be you, the real you, the true you. 
And you need to reconcile with that the sooner the better. Because if you don't reconcile with what's going on, your desire will destroy you. It will destroy you. And that is why it destroys people. So stop resisting things that you are not meant to resist and learn how to go along with the ride for your best benefit. Is too much desire wrong? How can you have too much desire? You got needs and wants. If you have more needs and wants and more expectations than another, then it is what it is. Is not enough desire, right? If that's how you're wired, that's how you're wired. You cannot have too much, too less. The fact is, is it right for you? It may be wrong for someone else, but it may be perfectly, perfectly okay for you. So stop comparing yourself to others and only focus on who you are and what you are. Simple as that. What are the benefits of desire? Fulfillment, happiness, well-being, clarity, being grounded, being charismatic, magnetic, being self-aware, being self-loving, being self-honoring, having self-respect. There's so many benefits. And you're thinking, look, I got some demented shit that I desire, Tara. How can that be good? Well, first of all, you labeled it again. You put demented. It is what it is. There's somebody for everyone. You're not the only one. So don't feel bad. Don't feel shame. If what is what it is. If someone made you feel that you're demented or something else, I would say the person who told you that shit got the problem. Don't have a problem with you. Other people may have a problem with you, but don't you have a problem with you? Embrace you. Love you. What are the consequences of desire? Consequences of desire? People may reject you. People may judge you. Part of life. People going to do that shit no matter what. You can show people whatever the hell they want to see. And they still will have a problem with you. So why not live your life? Live your best life in a balanced, mature, healthy way. You do that shit. You can't keep everybody happy. You can barely keep your damn self happy. So fuck them. Yeah, I like to say fuck them because fuck them, fuck them, fuck them, fuck them, fuck them. Simple as that. Fuck them. Don't let anyone stop you from why you're here and what you need to do. And you are here to live a happy, fulfilling life and grow and be the best person you can be. Simple as that. How do you manage your desires? Well, when you feel them, you acknowledge them. When you feel them, you figure out what they're trying to tell you. When you feel them, you figure out the best way to give it what it needs and you become best friends with yourself. That's how the fuck you manage it. If you fight with it, you dishonor it, you disrespect it, you ignore it, you're asking for trouble. Don't fuck with yourself. Yourself will mess up your life. Don't play games. Don't hinder. Don't thwart yourself. Embrace yourself, love yourself, honor yourself, acknowledge yourself and do what you need for yourself. Cause then when you are giving self love to yourself, other people will love you the same way you love yourself. You can't expect another to love you better than you love yourself. You got to love yourself at the utmost level because when you love yourself at the utmost level, then guess what that means? That means you will attract others who also will love you to the utmost level. It goes hand in hand. You love yourself half ass. You get half ass fraud, bitch ass people. You love yourself fully. You get people like me who accept people for who they are and say, it's cool. It's good. I got you. I understand you. It's all right. You choose how you want to live your life. Should you fear desire? Depends on if you're ignoring it. If you're ignoring it, hell yeah. I already told you earlier what it's going to do. It's going to fuck your shit up eventually. One way or another, it's going to fuck up one part of your life because you're denying who you are. Anxiety, depression, heart issues. You're being unhappy. You feel lonely. The list goes on and on how it manifests itself in our life. But you cannot deny desire. So how do you cultivate desire? And specifically what I want to say is how do you cultivate desire in men? You see, men and women, we both like to be desired. We like that shit, but for women, we struggle with getting or keeping men desiring us, keeping the same man that we're fond of desiring us. And the reason why we struggle with that is because we don't know how to read him. We don't know how to respond or react to the behaviors and actions to keep them chasing us. You see, men like to chase 
And when they feel the chase is over, all that desire and that excitement that you felt initially, that shit would dissipate. So how do you cultivate desire in men? You make them happy. Oh, some of you people, you, you feel you don't like what the hell I said. I understand, but be patient with me here. There's certain things that men need. And when they get it at the, in the right way at the right time, that keeps them wanting you and chasing you. And when they want you, they chase you. That's when we feel desired as women. It's two hands shaking. You need two hands to shake. There's a role that we play as women. There's a role that men play. And we both have to do our parts to both get the desire that we want to need. But if you don't know how to play the game, you don't know how to play your role, your part. Eventually you will go from being highly desirable to feeling like a dud and realize, wondering what the fuck happened to your relationship and where did this great guy go? The guy didn't go anywhere. You just don't know how to stroke and stoke him to get him to do what the fuck you want him to do. Do you understand? So how do you use a man's desire to get what you want? Now you think that sounds manipulative, but what I'm saying it's not because if you play your cards right as a woman, you give the man what he needs and in turn, he gives you what you need. And it's a symbiotic relationship and both parties actually end up very happy. The problem is, is that we don't play our roles right. And we assume that we can treat a man like a woman. You can't treat a man like a woman. If you treat a man like a woman, he is going to go the opposite direction from you. You are putting water on his fire, on his passion for you. You need to understand that. You need to be the woman that you were when he met you and when he chased you. Oh, listen to what the fuck I said. Listen very carefully. We meet a new guy. We click. He wants us. He's chasing after us. At that point in time, we're single. Some of you people may be cheating. Whatever. Go with me here. He sees certain aspects of you. He loves it. He wants you. He chases you. When he gets you, you change. You start becoming another person. That is not the person he wanted. So if you used to be active and social, then you need to continue being active and social even when you have fallen in love because that's how you keep the guy feeling the way he initially did and actually chasing after you. If you change who you are after you get him, you will no longer have that dude that you had originally and initially. Now that may be confusing for some of you, but those of you who are listening very carefully, you probably got it. But keep in mind, you can always reach out. You can contact me or you can ask me, Hey, this is what's going on with my dude. What should I do? And how do I get what I need from him? How do I change this shit around? You can tell me that shit. If you're a dude and a chick, you like her a lot, but she's fucking up your game. She's making you go the opposite direction. Hit me up. Ask me what I think and I can tell you what the fuck you need to do with her to get her being how she needs to be so you can be how you need to be and you people can be hot, passionate, and desirable couple, okay? So this is all I have for coming to my world, the dance of desire. Please stay tuned because I am talking about something in the news. All right, everyone. So before I get started, I want you to know in advance that what I'm discussing from the news, this episode, ep episode 53 is part one and episode 54 will have part two of what I'm discussing. So I'm going to reiterate this episode 53 is going to have part one of what I'm discussing from the news and episode 54 will have part two of what I'm discussing from the news. So what I read, this article is called, actually called, Can I Forgive Him? How I Discovered My Husband's Sex Obsession. Yes. Can I Forgive Him? Question mark. How I Discovered My Husband's Sex Obsession. What do you think about that? I've caught your attention, haven't I? I'm sure I have. So let's get started. So it says it's disputed whether there is such a thing as sex addiction, but a number of people's lives have been severely affected by compulsive sexual behavior. The first thing I want to start with, 
Who defines what a sexual addiction is? How much is too much sex? We have these ways as people to put these thresholds on what's acceptable for all. If there's not a one shoe, one size shoe fit all, how can there be a one size fit all as far as a sexual appetite? And if someone happens to be on the quote unquote higher end, maybe that's right for them. And yes, the likelihood of a lot of people being up there is slim, but that does not necessarily mean that someone has a, an, addic- an, an addiction. And I think we need to be very careful with that. It's so easy for us to fall into these labels of what we may be because we happen to be different from most people. You have to keep in mind, a lot of people know who the fuck they are and don't know what the fuck they want. So if you are basing yourself, benchmarking yourself, your sexual appetite, your sexuality on a bunch of random motherfuckers or people that you know, you are setting yourself up for a failure. You are setting yourself up to be believing that you could be a sex addict. One, two, compulsive sexual behavior. If you got, if you're motherfucking horny and you are easily aroused, you're a sensual sexual person. How are you compulsive? Because you are in tune and you are a sensual person. It's all relative. It's all really relative. And just because someone cannot fulfill your sexual appetite, how the fuck that makes you compulsive? Maybe it makes that other motherfucker dead. Like it's all relative. And we create issues where there are none just because the people around us, they don't understand it. They can't understand it or they can't help fulfill you. So naturally there must be something wrong with you. Moving on. So there's this one woman who discovered by chance after 20 years of marriage that her husband had a secret life. Surprise, surprise, motherfucking surprise. I'm being sarcastic if you guys haven't figured that shit out. She thought she had a very normal marriage. Here we go. How do you define normal? What is that? What does that look like? If every single one of us are different, are unique, and you put two unique people together, how can my marriage look like your marriage look like that marriage over there? That's some bullshit. If all of our marriage looks the same on appearance, all y'all motherfuckers, we're frauds. We're frauds. We're not real. We come together as a couple because there's a connection, a unique connection. Otherwise, we would be connecting with every person that we see. But we don't connect with every person we see. And we definitely don't get married or start relationships with every person we see. So if you have connected with a person and you have decided to marry that person, that means your connection is a unique signature. So there's no way that your marriage should or could look like the person to the left, look like to the person, look like from the person to the right, the the front, the back, the top, the bottom. Your marriage cannot possibly look like anyone else's. So how do you define normal? You're setting some standards up that you cannot live up to. And that is why shit like this starts to happen is that we're trying to live up to something that we were never meant to live up to. Your marriage is your own. What goes on in between, out between you you people, it's your own. You cannot compare what you have to anyone else because it's not the same. It will never be the same. And we need to start to understand that. She thought she had a normal marriage. She had her marriage. Normal is irrelevant. She had her marriage. Do you understand? Her marriage. As simple as that, normal. They were together for a number of years before they got married and they have been married for a couple of decades and they had children. The husband was a successful businessman who traveled a lot for work. So the wife, she spent a lot of time on her own. She spent a lot of time bringing up the children. And when the husband came home every weekend, you know, He was always happy. Of course, the fuck he was happy. He had another life that was speaking to his soul, his core and his being. Now, unfortunately, he had to dissect the two and keep them, keep them apart. 
But when he came home, he was happy because Monday through Friday, he was getting what he actually fully needed. And on the weekend, he got the other stuff that he needed, which helped him, helped him be a whole complete person. Now, ideally he would like to merge the shit together and get both his wife and everything else he liked seven days a week, but that wasn't possible. So he did one thing Monday through Friday and he did another thing Saturday to Sunday. She said she had no inkling of what was going on. Then one day she popped into his study to find something on his desk and his laptop was open. She had never checked up on him before, but the screen of his emails that was up and she saw an email which showed a reservation for a London hotel. And it was for the day she was going to leave on vacation or holiday with some friends. She thought it was odd and couldn't understand it. So she sat on it all day. And when she was lying in bed with him, she mustered up the courage and asked why he had a hotel booking. Yeah, she asked him while they're in bed. And you know what he did? Well, he didn't have a reply. He had shit to say because he was shocked. He was just as shocked as she was. His silence told her something was wrong and she was right. And then she got up and said, what's going on? He said he was sorry and that he was seeing somebody. Now, here's the thing. What exactly the fuck are you sorry about? Huh? That's another thing that rubs me the fucking wrong way. We throw out sorries like as fucking pieces of Halloween candy. Sorry. What is he sorry for? Is he sorry that he got caught? Is he sorry he never made it to the fucking hotel booking? Is he sorry that he hurt her? Is he sorry he's been exposed? Is he sorry that he may have to give up his other life? What is he sorry for exactly? We come up with these cookie cutter statements that sounds like the right motherfucking thing to say. But for people like me, that shit means nothing. It means nothing at all. Why are you sorry? You're doing what the fuck you wanted to do. You're doing what you needed to do. You're doing what you wanted to do. So why are you sorry? Huh? You're not sorry. But you're saying that because you're expected to say it. You're saying that because that's the right thing to say. You know what the right thing to say is? To speak your truth honestly, respectfully. Be honest. Be honest. No, you never wanted to hurt her, which is why you hid it. But you also should have been honest with her about you. How are you going to be married for someone this many years and they don't know you? They only know a part of you. What I tell you people about that fucking people knowing a part of you. If you can't be the whole you, what kind of relationship do you really have? And you're thinking I have unrealistic expectations to think that someone can be the whole you. No, I think you have some motherfucking unrealistic expectations by thinking you can be part of you. How the hell are you going to be part of you? How are you going to deny so much of yourself and think that you're living a full, complete life? If you can't be comfortable with the person you say you love and you can't be comfortable because the person that says they love you cannot accept you, I would say that's not a real relationship. I would say that's a fraud motherfucking relationship. I would say that's a relationship with fucking strings attached. Why you want love with strings attached? Aren't you worthy of being loved unconditionally? Oh, you don't know what that is? You don't know what it looks like? Well, first of all, if you loved yourself unconditionally, you wouldn't be in this motherfucking situation because you would have been self honoring and respectful of yourself. And you would have sat down and had a mature conversation about what it was about you, but you didn't do that because you were scared because you were too busy judging yourself, but your desire, it consumed you. It took over you and you couldn't run or hide from it. So that's what the fuck is going on. But you're sorry. Eh, I don't think so. You need to buck the fuck up. And show some backbone on that shit. Don't readily apologize on some bullshit you've been doing all the time. Man the fuck up. Woman the fuck up. Own it. Be honest about it. Don't pussyfoot. Don't dance. Say, you know what? This is a part of me. And this has been part of me a long time. And I never fully understood it or what it was. But when I began to understand it, I wanted to speak with you about it. But I was scared of losing you, my love. And I didn't know what to do. Fuck a sorry. Tell the truth. 
Speak from your heart. Let a motherfucker come with me some goddamn sorry. I swear to God, I'm going to slap you with a fucking sorry in your fucking face and I'm going to shove that shit down your throat. Don't come to me with fucking sorries. Come to me with honesty. Come to me with clarity. Come with me. Come to me with some fucking answers. Don't come to me with no goddamn sorries. I don't want to hear a fucking sorry. I can't do shit with a sorry. I can't do shit with a sorry. You know what a sorry means to me? That means you want me to help you feel better. <gasps> Listen to what the hell I said. You do some foul shit. You tell me you're sorry. You want me to forgive you because when I forgive you, that means I make you feel better about some fuck all shit that you just did. Why am I going to help you feel better when I'm still feeling fuck all? I'm not here to make you feel better. You need to make yourself feel fucking better and I need to make myself feel better. And how am I going to feel better? Getting goddamn answers from you. Not no, I goddamn sorry. Fuck a sorry. I know most of y'all disagree with me, but as far as I'm concerned, look at how many sorries you got from people. And they turned around and did the shit again. So you can decide which side of the fence you're on, but I'm on the side where don't give me any sorries. Give me some real honest answers. Okay. So he said he was seeing someone. She got up and left the room and she went to go cry someplace. Eventually he went to her and said he was sorry again. Yeah. He said he was sorry again. And that he started going to strip clubs and met a dancer who had become, who he had become close to and that he had booked the room to meet her in order to take the relationship a step further. Let me tell you something. If you met a a motherfucker at a strip club, okay. And you became close. Do you think they sitting around playing motherfucking chess? You think they're sitting around playing fucking patty cake? You think they're playing tic-tac-toe in a strip club? No. So when someone said we became close in a goddamn strip club, You can put two and two together as far as what the fuck is going on in the strip club. So if your husband has taken it out of the strip club and he has paid money to go to a hotel room, I can guarantee you the relationship is deeper than what the fuck he's saying. Listen to what the hell I said. No man is going to spend money on a woman that he's mostly getting for fucking free in a goddamn strip club. If he has taken that shit out of a strip club to be somewhere private where it's costing him some money, that motherfucker's in a relationship. He is in a relationship and you may not like what the fuck I said, but I know you know that you agree with me. Now we move on. The wife asked whether they had sex. See, if you're going to ask a question, ask a real goddamn question that you don't know the answer to. No man takes a stripper out of the strip club and pays money for a London hotel room if he hasn't already tapped that shit. She's already done some shit to him in the strip club and he wants more. And it's only so far he can go in the strip club. And maybe in this strip club, she went all the way. But he decided, I want the full goddamn eight course meal, which is why he has booked a hotel room. So if you're going to ask a question, Ask some real questions. Ask questions that's going to rattle his motherfucking ass and get him to spill all the beans. Don't ask the easy goddamn questions. Don't ask the goddamn evident questions. Don't ask shit that you already goddamn know. You are wasting time because one, you're shocked. Two, you don't want to believe it. And three, you're fucking pussyfooty. If you found it, You sat in all day. You need to go in like a motherfucking African warrior with your spear and get ready to start poking his ass with a goddamn spear to get the answers that you want. Come in like the FBI and the CIA. That's what the fuck I said because that's what you heard. Don't say, have you had sex? Of course he's had sex. Now, if he met her at fucking Starbucks, then I would say he just wants to get closer. Closer. He met her at the strip club. I can put, I can connect those two fucking dots together and I can be blind, crippled and crazy on that shit. And I can still connect those dots. Do you understand? He said, no, they didn't have sex. There was just quote unquote teasing only. What kind of teasing go on the strip club? She is basically, if not fully naked, close to naked. He can easily slip his fingers at many different locations while he's sitting in that goddamn strip club. And the same goes for her. So don't ask stupid questions, guys. If you want to know, you got to go in hard. And I understand that it's shocking. It's rattling. It's unnerving for you. But 
This is what humans do. They have sex. They're having sex. And I think some of us, we need to step outside of these fucking cobwebs and get real with what the fuck is going on with humans and our desire and our nature. We're not little ass kids. We're grown ass people. And we need to understand that. And before you even approached him, I would have been analyzing this shit from behind the scenes. Forgot, what is he doing? Why is he doing it? And who the hell does this man really? I would have came in like a goddamn interrogator. Because clearly you don't know your husband. You know a part of your husband. And the majority of him, you're clueless about. How have you fallen in love with someone? And you haven't caught a hint, a whiff of who they could possibly be. No, that's not possible. People always drop breadcrumbs as far as who and what they are. They do. We just overlook that shit. I can guarantee you any and all relationships you start in the beginning, people will put little breadcrumbs out there to see how you react and respond. And if you don't react or respond well, they will hide it. If they like you enough, they will hide it. If they don't like you enough, they will bounce on your fucking ass. So he must have cared for her enough that he was willing to try to hide who and what he was. But you see how well that worked out, didn't you? It didn't work out very long. So they were teasing only in a strip club. Yeah, we, we know what that means, okay? So she thought, okay, we can sort this out. This is just a middle-aged man having a moment of crazy. Yep, that's what she said. He's a middle-aged man having a moment of crazy. Now, why do you want to ascribe, minimize, deflect what the hell's going on here? Why do people want to assume because someone is middle-aged, they seem to have lost their damn mind? No, what's happening at middle age is you're actually finding yourself. What people want to assume that you've lost your mind. No, you haven't lost your mind. You have found you. You are finding you. And what the problem is, is that people don't like what the hell you have found and they don't know what to do with it. So they're naturally going to assume that, you know, such and such is going crazy. No, such and such is not going crazy. Such and such is getting touch in touch with themselves. Such and such is trying to live their best life. Such and such is trying to be who they are instead of who you want them to be. Such and such is trying to live a life of happiness and fulfillment. It's sad that a lot of us have to wait until middle age to get the courage and the clarity to try to find ourselves. But this is what it is. You think because someone's middle age, they want to feel young again. You know why you want to feel young again? Because when you were young, you had fun. When you were young, you laughed. When you were young, you were adventurous. When you were young, you felt full of life. I don't care how old you are. You don't need to be young to feel full of life, to be who you are, to embrace who you are. So let's stop minimizing people and what they're doing, what they're going through because of an age. The fact is he's middle age. His shit's still working and it's working very well. And that I would say, congratulations, because another motherfuckers that dick don't work or another, a lot of people that fucking treasure boxes don't work. So clearly his shit is working. It's working. It's working very well. And his brain is working also because he's still a successful businessman. He just has desires that he could no longer do anything with. So he did the best that he could in trying to keep it a secret. Now, I know that you people think what I'm saying is wrong and it's a lie and how he went about it was wrong. Yes, how he went about it was wrong, but he did it. Out of love, love for her and love for himself. And you probably think I'm full of shit. Maybe, but he could have did it in front of her face. He could have left her. He could have, he could have actually done a number of different things. He chose this approach because he still loved her and he loved the family. He wanted to keep it apart and he wanted to deal with this in a way that wasn't disruptive and allowed him to be the best husband that he could be. Now, if it was me, I would want a motherfucker to be upfront with me. Tell me what the fuck is going on. Don't live a double life. Let me know what's going on so I can make a choice about whether I want to stay or go. Don't lie to me. Lay that shit butt ass bare naked for me. But a lot of people are not like me. They can't handle what's going on. They're uncomfortable with sex and sexuality and what it all means and what it all says. Because we're all trying to live this cookie cutter life. Can't have a cookie cutter life when you're not a cookie cutter type of person. 
So she thought he was having middle age madness, but she thought, you know, we will get through this. She thought it was far. She also thought it was far too coincidental though, that she should just happen to come across an email of a hotel booking before any sexual relationship had taken place. She thought it was too much of a coincidence. Yeah, it was too much of a coincidence because he had planned this shit in advance. And if he planned it in advance, that means there's a pattern or history of what's going on. So her wheels started turning and she actually started waking up as far as the nature of humans, the nature of their needs, their urges and desires and what it means and what it causes them to do. So this is all I'm going to be discussing about this story, but to hear the rest of what I think, tune in next week for episode 54 for part two. But what I want all of you to really think long and hard about is when we find out about situations like these, we naturally want to say the person's crazy. Uh, they're middle-aged losing their mind. They're freaky sex addicts. They're dishonest. They're disgusting. They're this, 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 that, and the other. Why can't we all just live our best lives that is self honoring to ourselves? Why can't we take responsibility and ownership for what we feel is right and wrong? And if someone wants to do something that is out of line with what we think life is about, then why don't we have the courage to walk away and set that person free for they can live their life? Why do we hold on to people and things that we do not accept fully? Why do we hold on to people, places, and things that we cannot see truly? Why do we sit back and accept half-ass, fraud-based, strings-attached type of relationships? Why do we accept shackles? Why do we continuously accept labels? Why and we? Why in the hell do we give a fuck what other people think? Happiness is a choice. Misery is a choice. And sometimes to find your happiness, you will have to do things that do not look right on the surface. It will look every bit of wrong as far as what's okay and what's not okay in society. Yeah, you will find yourself presented in situations is like, fuck, what do I do? This makes me truly, fully happy. But if I go on this path, I'm going to have this, 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 this label and judgment placed upon me. But if I don't go down this path, I won't get these labels, but I will be unfulfilled and hollow. This is a rock and a hard space to be placed into. Whether you choose to be miserable and look good or happy and look bad, those are some steep prices to pay. Listen to what the hell I said. A number of us choose to have lives that look good on the surface, but are unfulfilling. Love with strings attached and you are being half fraud based you. But if then on the other hand, you have relationships that you can be fully you unconditionally loved, but that path, it doesn't look right on the surface. It looks every bit of wrong as far as what's okay, social norms in society. So yeah, you're between a heart, a, a rock and a hard place. And this is a called a character building moment. If you want happiness, you got to have the balls and the backbone to withstand the backlash, the judgment, everything you're going to get. If you don't feel strong enough to withstand that, then you have to accept your mediocre, unfulfilling, looks good on paper, half ass type of life and accept that fact that you're miserable. These are called spirit-based, spiritual growth type of decisions. Both are going to teach you a lesson. So I, if I'm going to learn a lesson, I'm going to learn that shit having some happiness. I'm not going to learn some hard lessons and be in a fuck all situation at the same damn time. No, that's, that is not stacking me for winning. That's stacking me for some unnecessary failure. So if I got to choose some shit, I'm going to choose some shit that fully makes me happy. 
which which help make me stronger to withstand all the bullshit that I may or may not encounter from other people. Life is about choices. Life is about making decisions and we have to get much, much better on how we make decisions and what the hell we do. We are here for growth. We're here for learning. We're here for happiness and fulfillment. And sometimes to get that happiness, you got to trudge, do some shit that you really never thought you would have to do. But going through it, it will build your character and make you stronger and more fulfilling. It's going to toughen you up. Either way, you're going to be toughened up. I'd rather be toughened up and happy than toughened up and fucking miserable. It's a choice. So come back next week for part two. I'm sure you will enjoy it. I'm sure a number of you think what I say is out there, but I live by the premise. I don't believe in deprivation. I don't believe in sacrifice. I don't believe in hiding who I am. I don't believe in watering down who I am. If you can't take me fully for who I am, that I don't want you in my life. It's too much work trying to hide me. I don't want to hide me. I want to be me and I want to be around people who I can be me with. And if I can't be me with you, then I won't be with you. Because there's always another motherfucker that's in mind that can take your goddamn place. And I, in turn, will accept you also. It's so much easier when you're accepted. It's so much easier when you're comfortable. It's so much easier to receive that happiness and fulfillment. So come back next week and thank you for listening. Are you disappointed this has come to an end? Well, it doesn't have to. Reach out and let me know what you think about this episode and my podcast. You can try and slide into my DM, but I will kick your ass out. So I suggest you hop into my DM on Instagram at Difficult and Demanding or Twitter at Mrs. D and D or leave a comment on one of my posts. Now give, give, give. Give my episode links to friends, family, associates, frenemies. Hell, give it to your enemies. Actually, I don't give a damn who you give it to. Just give the shit to people and bring laughter to others and show your love for this podcast. You need me more than you realize. So stop depriving yourself of me and follow me on Instagram at Difficult and Demanding. Episode 54 is here on November 30th, 2018 from the I'm Difficult and Demanding podcast.